from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to a special edition of Cube Conversations here in our Boston area studio. Happy to welcome to the program, first of all, to my right, a first time guest on the program, Drew Clark, who's the Chief Strategy Officer at Click, and welcome back to the program. Itamar Ankarion, who's a Senior Vice President of Enterprise Data Integration, now with Click, but a uh, new title due to the acquisition of Attunity. So thanks so much for joining us, gentlemen. Oh, great to be here. All right, thanks so, so Drew, uh, you know, Attunity we've had on the program many times. We have had Click on the program, but uh, maybe for our audience, just give us a quick level set on Click and uh, you know, the acquisition uh, you know, is, is some exciting yeah. news. So let's start there and we'll get into it. Sure, thanks Stu. And Click, we're a 25 year old company in the business analytics space. A lot of people know about our products, ClickView, ClickSense. Uh, we have 50,000 customers around the world and from large companies to kind of small organizations. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you know, we 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 talk a lot about data on our program. Uh, you know, I, I, when I, I look through some of the Click uh, documentation, uh, it it resonated with me a bit because when we talk about digital transformation on our program, the, the key thing that differentiates the most between the old way of doing things and the modern is I need to be data driven. I need to make my decision. The the analytics piece of that. Uh, so, it, it, Amar, let, let's start there and talk about, you know, what, other than, uh, you know, the, the logo on your card changes, you know, what's the same, what's different going forward for you? Well, first of all, we're excited about, the, about this uh, merger and the opportunity that we see in the market because there's a huge demand for data, uh, predominantly for doing uh, new types of analytics, business intelligence, data is fueling digital transformation. And part of the main challenge customers have, organizations have, is making more data available faster and putting it in the hands of the people who need it. So on our part, the, at coming from Attunity, we spent the last few years innovating and creating technologies that have helped organizations modernize how they create uh, new data architectures to support faster data, more agility in terms of enabling data for analytics. And now together with Click, we can continue to expand that and at the end of the day, provide more data to more people. Yeah, uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, Drew, it's interesting. You know, th there, there's been no shortage of data out there. You know, we've, we've for decades been talking about the data growth, but actually getting access to our data, it's in silos more than ever. It's, you know, spread out all over the day. We, we say, you know, the challenge of our time is really building distributed architectures and data is really all over the place. And, you know, customers, you know, I, I, there's stats all over the place as to how much is searchable, how much is available, you know, how much is usable. So, you know, I explain a little bit, mm. uh, you know, kind of the, the, the challenge you're facing and, uh, you know, how, how you're helping move customers along uh, that, that, that journey. Well, what you bring up, Stu, is the kind of the idea of kind of data and analytics for decision making. And really it's about that decision making to go faster and to kind of get into that right kind of language into the right individuals. And we really believe in this concept of data literacy. And data literacy was said, I think, well between uh, two professors who uh, co-authored a white paper. One professor was from MIT, the other one was from Emerson College, a communication school. Data literacy is the kind of the ability to read, understand, analyze, and argue with data. And the more you can actually get that working inside an organization, the better you have uh, from a decision making and the better competitive advantage you have. You're either going to win, you're going to accomplish your mission. And now with what you said, the proliferation of data, it gets harder. And where do you find it? And you need it in real time. And that's where the acquisition of Attunity comes in. Okay, I, I need to ask a follow up on that. So uh, we, we, one of the favorite events I ever did with, with two other MIT professors. Yes, we're Boston area. We're quoting a lot of yeah. MIT professors here. Uh, but uh, Andy McAfee and Eric Brunjolson. Uh, talked about racing with the machine mm. um, because you know it's you know oh great you know you know who's the best chess player out there was it you know the, the the human grandmaster or was it the computer and you know the studies were actually as if you put the grandmaster with the computer they could actually beat yeah. either the best computer or, or the best person so when you talk about you know the data and the analytics everybody's looking at you know the AI and the ML pieces is like okay you know how do these pieces go together how does that fit into the data literacy piece you know the people and 
the, you know, the, the, is there the machine learning, I'm, I'm assuming, is part of it? Yeah, well, yeah. what you bring up is the idea of kind of augmenting the human, yeah. right? And we believe very much around the cognitive kind of interface of kind of the technology, the software, with kind of the person and that uh, decision-making point. And so what you'll see around our own kind of uh, perspective is that we were part of a second generation BI of like self-service and we've moved rapidly into this third generation, which is the cognitive kind of augmentation of the decision maker, right? And so when you say dis, uh, data literacy is arguing with data, well, how do you argue and actually have the updated machine learning kind of recommendations, but it's still a human making that decision. And that's an important kind of component of our kind of late, our own kind of technology that we bring to the table. But with Attunity, that's the data side needs to be there faster and more effective. Yeah, so Itamar, please, you know, fill us in on that, that data is the, you know, in, in big data, we talked about the three Vs, so, you know, where are we today, and uh, how do I be able to, you know, get and leverage all of that data? So uh, that's exactly where we've been focused over the last uh, few years, and uh, as we've worked with customers that uh, were focused on building new data lakes, uh, new data warehouses, looking at the cloud, building basically more than new foundations for enabling the organization to use way more data than they ever used before. So it goes back to the volume, at least one V, out of the three Vs you mentioned. And the other one, of course, is the velocity and how, uh, how fast it is. And we've actually come to see that there are, in a sense, two dimensions to velocity that come, come together. One is how timely is the data you're using. And one of the big changes we're seeing in the market is that the user expectation and the business need for real-time data is becoming ever more critical. Uh, if we used to talk to uh, customers that talked about real-time data, because when they ask for data, they get a response very quickly, but it's last week's data, yeah. well, that's not, doesn't cut it. So what we're seeing is that, first of all, the dimension of getting data that is real-time data that represents the data as it's currently at. The second one is how quickly you can actually make that happen. So because business dynamics change much, much faster now, the speed of change in the industry uh, accelerates, customers need the ability to put solutions together, make data available to answer business questions really faster. They cannot do it in the order of uh, months and years, they need to do it in the order of days, sometimes even hours. And that's where uh, our solutions come in. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my background's on the infrastructure side. I spent a lot of time in, in the cloud world, and you know, you, you talk about you know how what we need for real time. Well, you know, it used to be you know I, I rolled out a server. You know, that took you know weeks or months. Then a VM it reduced in time. Now we're in you know containerized and Kubernetes world, and you mm -hmm. know we're now talking a much shorter time frame. And it's like, oh, if you show me the way something was you know an hour ago, oh my gosh, that's not the way the world is. And I, I think you know for years we talked to the Hooper. World, you know, what is real time and how do I really define that? And th the answer we usually came up, it is getting the right information, you know, in the right place <laughs> to the right person. Um, or in the sales standpoint, it's like, I need that information to save that client or get what they need. So are, are mm -hmm. we still, you know, some of those terms, you know, scale and real time uh, sort of require context, but uh, you know, what, 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 where does that fit into your customer discussions? Well, two parts there, as you bring up you know, I think what you're saying is absolutely still true. You know, right data, right person, right time. It gets harder though with just the volumes of data. Where is it and how do you find it? And how do you make sure that it's, it's right, the right pieces to the right place? And you brought up the evolution of just the compute infrastructure and analytics likes to be close to the data, but if you have data everywhere, how do you make sure that part works? And we've been investing in a lot of our own cloud analytics infrastructure is now done on a microservices basis. So it's running on Kubernetes clusters. It can work in whatever cloud compute infrastructure you want, be it Amazon or Azure or uh, Google or kind of your local kind of platform data centers. But you need that kind of small piece tied to the right kind of data on the side. And so that's where you see a great match between the two you know, solutions and when you, and the second part is the response from our customers uh, and after the acquisition was announced was tremendous. We, I had one customer who works in a manufacturing space was like, this is exactly what I was looking to do from an analytics basis. I needed more data real time and I was looking at a variety of solutions. Uh, she said, uh, thank you very much, you made my kind of uh, life a little easier. I can narrow down to uh, one uh, particular platform 
Uh, so we have manufacturing companies, we have uh, military kind of units and organizations to um, healthcare organizations that have had and just countless kind of feedback coming in along that same kind of question. All right, and Amar, uh, you know, for, for, for the Attunity customers, what does this mean for them uh, coming into the Click family? Well, first of all, it means for them that we have a much broader opportunity to serve them. Click is a much, uh, much bigger company. We have uh, more resources we can put to bear to both continue and enhance the Attunity uh, offering as well as create the integrations with other products such as uh, Click, the Click Data Catalyst, which uh, Click acquired several months ago. And there's a great synergy between those uh, the products, the Attunity product and the Click Data Catalyst to provide a much more comprehensive, uh, modern enterprise data integration platform. And then beyond that, to create also synergies with other uh, Click Analytic products. Mm -hmm. So again, while the Click Data Integration platform, consisting of Attunity and the Click Data Catalyst, uh, will be independent and provide solutions for any data platform, analytic platform, cloud platform, as it already does today, we'll continue to invest in it. There's also opportunities to create unique synergies with some of our Click's uh, technologies, such as the Associative Big Data Index and some others, to provide more value, especially at scale. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so uh, Drew, I, I, please expand on that a little bit if you can. There, there's so many pieces. I know we're, we're going to spend a little bit of time yeah. going deeper in some, some of the uh, other ones, but uh, when you talk to your customers, when you talk to your partners, what, what do you want to make sure their, their key takeaways are? Right, so there is a couple of important points that Amar, you made on a data integration platform, and so that's the combination of mm -hmm. the Attunity products plus uh, the Data Catalyst, which was uh, you know, co-wired through Podium Data. Both of those kind of components are available and will continue to be available for our customers to use on whatever analytics platform. So we have customers who use the data for data science and they want to work in R and Python and their own kind of machine learning or working with platforms like data robots. Uh, and they'll be able to continue to do that with that same speed. They also could be using another kind of analytical visualization tool, and you know we actually have a number of customers who do that, and we'll continue to support that. So that's the first point you know, I think you made up, which is an important one. Uh, the second is, while uh, we do think there is some value with using ClickSense uh, with the, the platform, and we've been investing on a platform called the Associative Big Data Index. And that sounds like um, a very complicated piece, but it's uh, what we've done is taken our kind of unique kind of uh, value proposition as an analytical company, which is the ability to work with data and ask questions of it and have the answers come to you very quickly, is to be able to take that same associative experience uh, that people use in our product and bring it down to the data lake. And that's where you start to see that same kind of uh, what people love about ClickView and ClickSense and brought into the data lake, and that's what Itamar was bringing up from a scale kind of perspective. So you have both kind of uh, opportunities. All right, well, Drew and Ibar, really appreciate you uh, sharing the, uh, the importance of uh, these coming together. Uh, we're going to spend some more time digging into the, uh, the, yeah. the individual pieces there. Uh, I might be able to say, okay, are we past the data lakes? Has it gone to a data swamp or a data ocean? Because, uh, you know, there are lots of sources of data, and, uh, you know, the, the, the lake I always see is it seems a little bit more pristine than the average IT environment yeah. is. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, thank you so much, and uh, look forward to having some more conversations yeah. with you. All right. Thanks, Drew. All right. Thank you, Sue. And, and be sure to uh, check out thecube.net for all our videos. Uh, I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks so much for watching.